Arab terrorist opened fire on Israeli engineers outside of Jenin. An Israeli shepherd was injured in Judea when he was attacked by Arabs and hit in the head with a hoe. 17 infiltrators were smuggled into Israel in a secret room under the bus floor, and the U.S. ambassador to Israel called on the Jerusalem leadership to support a two-state solution. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Hello and welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Guys, make sure to like the video and subscribe. It really makes us happy when people subscribe and we love it. So please subscribe. Do my heart good. Also hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of The Israel Guys. We're doing three shows a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You don't want to miss it. Guys, we might have rain in Israel this week. And for all you guys living in the United States, that you're probably wondering, like, what's the big deal about rain? Well, we usually don't have rain before October in Israel, so this would be super early if this actually happens. Uh, usually the first rains come in around the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. Here in Israel, God pours his blessings on the land of Israel in rain, but Right now, forecasters are predicting that Israel will see the first rains of the winter by the end of the week. Who knows if that will happen or not. We're going to jump right in here with the news. So Arab terrorists opened fire on Israeli engineers in northern Samaria. Thankfully, no one was injured. So just Tuesday, yesterday, Palestinian Arab terrorists opened fire on an Israeli engineering team. They were from the Israel Defense Ministry near the Jalama checkpoint on the northern edge of Samaria in the Jenin district. Jenin is north of here. It's like a terrorist hotbed here. Many of the terrorists that they have caught have actually come from the town of Jenin. Thankfully, no injures, injuries were reported in the attack, as I said, but a tractor was uh, damaged and after the shooting, some 30 bullet casings were found at the scene. So it must have been a miracle that no one was injured because there were 30 rounds found. Um, IDF forces were deployed to the area afterwards to search for the terrorist, and they closed down the checkpoint trying to catch this terrorist. But the funny thing is, shortly after the attack, footage from the shooting, which was apparently taken by the terrorist, they filmed themselves getting ready to go carry out the carry out this attack it was found on the internet kind of crazy that they would video themselves of going to carry out a terrorist attack but moving along an israeli shepherd he was injured in judea when he and one other were attacked by a palestinian arab i bet you won't see this in any of the mainstream news networks they're always talking about the palestinian poor palestinian shepherds who are being injured by the idf but that's rare that that happens but this time, an Israeli Jewish shepherd was seriously wounded on Monday evening after he was attacked by a PA Arab near the Jewish community of Ma'on, which is down south from here, like three hours in the southern Hebron Hills. I've actually been down to Ma'on before. But this Israeli, he works as a shepherd. He was struck in the head by an Arab swinging a hoe, and he knocked him in the head. El Elhanan Groner, he's a correspondent for the Jewish Voice. He reported Monday night in a tweet that the Arab attacker was actually a Palestinian Authority police officer. Uh, he also added that he had served in the past as coordinator of a committee that fights Jewish communities and fences in the area, and which has been responsible. He, he had been responsible in the past for provocations and violent attacks on Jews before. Also, according to a security source, not sure uh, which source, dozens of Palestinian Arabs were actually involved in this incident where the shepherd was attacked. Uh, right now, the police are inv investigating the incident. There will probably be more news coming out about this soon. But Magen David Dome emergency medica medical personnel treated the wounded Israeli at the scene before transporting him to Soroka Medical Center, which is in Beersheba, where he was listed in stable condition. Uh, one of the paramedics who uh, responded to the scene, Eliashav Amati, he said, quote, The injured man suffered from a severe bleeding head injury and was in a state of semi-consciousness. We gave him initial medical treatment that included drug treatment, oxygen administration, and dressing the wound and evacuated him to the hospital while his condition was serious and stable. Also, the Mount Hebron Regional Council chairman, 
Yochai Damri, he said that, quote, This is an attempted murder. I demand that the security forces act decisively against the perpetrators and restore deterrence and security to the residents and the region. Guys, I'm going to tell you about how 17 infiltrators were actually, actually smuggled into Israel. But first, you see this really awesome shirt that I'm wearing? At least I think it's awesome. Not only because it says the Israel guys, but because I believe in supporting, showing my support for the land of Israel. They're not just awesome t-shirts, as I said, but this t-shirt can be your own and you can show your support for the land of Israel. These are next level, high quality t-shirts. Uh, they're the perfect combination of style and comfort. Don't worry, 100% cotton. Also super soft and very lightweight, just an all around really comfortable shirt. Also, Check out this awesome design on the sleeve. It's the American and Israeli flag blended together. So it's perfect for any American who wants to show their support for Israel. Guys, you can go to shop.theisraelguys.com to check out this awesome new merch. We also have brand new hats on this store which say Israel established 1948. Another great way, just a generic hat to show your support for the land of Israel. So guys, go to shop.theisraelguys.com if you want to check out our awesome new merch we have on the store. So, 17 infiltrators were smuggled into Israel in a quite a peculiar way. They were uh, they made a secret room under the bus floor, which, got to give them credit, it was pretty genius. Uh, but according to Israel Hayom, a bus was making its way from the direction of Judea and Samaria towards central Israel. They were going to cross um, by the Rantis Crossing. Actually, they did. And they were found by the border police and the border police prepared for their arrival and then stopped them as they were traveling on Israel's Route 444. Um, in all, they arrested three individuals suspected of organizing the transportation for this. Um, when they stopped the bus, upon opening the door of the hiding place, which was down under, the officers discovered steps in a room in which the infiltrators were hiding. It was also in the room that they discovered a total of 17 illegal infiltra infiltrators. Also, the driver of the bus, he was a resident of Kafar Qasim. He was found. Uh, he didn't have a driver's license, and so he was arrested. Guys, in a counterterrorism conference... Um, that was held recently. The U.S. ambassador to Israel said some, um, I should say, maybe not disturbing, but or not even surprising, because we know where his stance is on the two-state solution. But again, he voiced his support for the two-state solution, and he pressured Israel and the Jerusalem leadership to support a two-state solution. So Thomas Nides, he participated on Sunday in the World Summit on Counterterrorism of the International Institute for Counterterrorism. Uh, it was held at the Reichman University, and he was arguing that the leadership in Jerusalem must support the two-state solution. Uh, he said here in direct quote, In order to preserve a democratic Jewish state, it is important to reach a two-state solution. The situation in the West Bank cannot continue. Guys, in just a second, I'm going to tell you some stats about attacks in Israel of what's uh, been going on just in the month of August, how many attacks there have been, terrorist attacks. Can you imagine how much more there would be if there was a two-state solution? Literally, they, uh, the Palestinians would have control of the mountain ranges, and they can look directly down onto the coastal plains, to all the major cities, Tel Aviv, Haifa, and they could shoot their rockets directly there. Literally, we're on the Mount of Blessing here in Israel, and on a clear day, we can see all of Tel Aviv perfectly clear. We can even see the Mediterranean Sea and ships that are sailing out on the sea. And so if the Palestinians had control of this, as they did in Gaza, when they pulled out of Gaza, they made it into a terrorist hotbed, and they continued to rain rockets out of there. Can you imagine if they had control of this place, they would be able to rain rockets onto all the major cities and there would be horrible things happening, guys. I think Thomas Nides knows that this is a horrible idea and yet he's continued to voice his support for it. Not only that, but to pressure the Israeli government and the Jerusalem leadership to support a two-state solution. Guys, this cannot happen Drop it in the comments if you think that a two-state solution is a horrible idea. And yeah, just speak up for this. this. This cannot happen. Guys, just in August of this year, there have been 832 attacks of terror in Judea and Samaria. So the al Salah news site, which is affiliated with Hamas, they've documented the escalating terror 
um, activities in Judea and Samaria. Uh, I guess sort of flex on their part. They're priding themselves in what they have done to destroy the state of Israel. And we're not sure about how much of this report is accurate, but we're just talking about this report today. They said during the past 24 hours, 36 fighting ac activities were carried out. Fighting activities were carried out in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, including three shootings at Jewish-owned vehicles, which injured three Israelis. Also in the past day, there have been fire bombings around Judea and Samaria, including five near the town of Husan, south of Bethlehem, and young PA Authority Arabs. Um fought with Israelis in eight different incidents incidents, and with IDF forces in seven locations. So Ma'ati, which is an Arab information center, they documented 832 acts of terror in Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem just during the month of August of this year, and they noted that these attacks had injured 28 Israelis. Also um, during August, there were 73 shooting attacks towards IDF forces and Jewish civilians. Guys, we can obviously th see that the hand of God is on Israel. If there wasn't, there would be so many more Israelis killed. But continue to pray for the protection of the state of Israel and for the safety of her people, that the, the violence would stop here in Israel, that there would be no more terror attacks. Continue to pray for the well-being of Israel. Make sure to grab your new Israel Guys merch. Show your support for the land and people of Israel. Also, check out our Temple Mount series videos coming out every Sunday. It's a six-part series. We've already released the first two episodes. We we're talking about the true location of the Temple Mount, and it's a really awesome series you do not want to miss. We're taking you around the places in Jerusalem and actually showing you um, the real lo locations and places there, boots on the ground style. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments below. We love to interact with you and engage with you there. Also, just answer any questions you have. Drop them in the comments below. Guys, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.